This is Billy Ruth Hopkins Futurici on KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial, right here in beautiful downtown Brookings, where almost every day is a beautiful day and we can always choose to say yes. Life is indeed very, very good. Well, you may remember that this is a work of pure, unadulterated allegorical fiction, or what J.R.R. Tolkien liked to call feigned history. So, sit back, relax, suspend all disbelief, and let's continue with our tale. enough of earthlings and their wars. Let's just end it now and start over. What do you say, mother? Hey, let's make them chocolate chip cookies this next time, okay? Hey, Pop. Earth. But Pop, didn't that place get wiped out in one of those solar tsunamis? Well, get a century there, Lilith. Go ahead and make your pop some chocolate chip cookies, and and we'll try starting over. And and stop that incessant printing, Lilith. Lilith, Lilith, thy name should have been Vanity. Give me that remark, Pop. Here, catch it, Lyria. Thank you, Lilith, dear. I like the way you think. See, Pop, you can kick the girl out of paradise, but you can kick the paradise out of the girl. <laughs> oh, Lilith, Lilith, you simply must join my choir. We're doing a lovely number. I just lifted from the ethers this morning. It went to someone else first, but they didn't wake up in time to transcribe it, so I guess I get it. Ooh! Just wait till you hear, and I want you to sing the lead. You won't even have to get dressed, Lilith. Ooh! I love it when those earthlings sleep through some of our best stuff, Etheria. What's your next rehearsal? Midnight tonight at the UHC Theater in the round where we'll get triple full moons beaming through the skylights. I'll take that remote control now, ladies. Let's go make some chocolate chip cookies for your pop. Quiero, yo quiero oatmeal raisin. Oh, I want oatmeal raisin. No, that's high time we had to get some Anglo-Saxon purity around here, Angelita Macaroons. I cannot live without a macaroon. Thor, when did you start reading the classics? You forget, Pop. I am the classic. And I'm sick of all that woke culinary diversity, too. So there, can you just forget about oatmeal? I don't want no chocolate. I don't want no race of raisins in this family. Oh, heavenly stars, Thor, you sound like one of them loveless lizard Venusians. Oh, what is a loveless lizard Venusian? Oh, now you've done it, mother. She's much too young for that story. Oh, never too young for the truth, I always say. Whoa, you wouldn't know truth if it hit you like a divine thunderbolt, Thor. Wake up and stop watching so much of mainstream media. And what about free will, Pop? Just saying, what about free will? Now, 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 you two stop bickering. We don't need to start Universal War 8, now do we? And anyway, Pop, maybe it's time for Angelita to learn about the loveless lizard Venetians. She's just as likely as not to run into one of them. 
Yeah, the truth shall set you free, right, Pop? Or don't you stand on that anymore? Well, Lilith, 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 didn't I replace you once already? Well, get us Andrea Evolve, oh, for orb's sake. Tell her story, okay, now, quiet down, quiet down, quiet down, quiet down. Thor, you start a campfire, okay, and Lilith, Lilith, just get get us some of them marshmallows so we can have them some more. No, I'll start the campfire, and Thor will have to fetch the marshmallows. Hey, Pop, oh, yeah. If she must, go on out to the celestial deck and um, mm. and yes, let's let's start just start the darn campfire. Watch the stars and calm down, everyone. Mother, tell us the story about the loveless lizard Phoenicians. On Halita, dear, sit down and pay close attention. Me, I think I'll go see what's happening at Swan Lake as the three-phase fountain melts away the ice. Well, Pop, remember, I, ha I Pop, I hate to correct you, remember, but it's not Swan Lake down there in Slida, Colorado. What are you talking about, Mother? Well, actually, you know, you should know this. I hate to correct you, but it's actually called Sand Lake. It's Sand Lake. Oh, you mean I've been making a mistake all these centuries? Well, actually, Pop... Yes, sorry, sorry to tell you that. Who would have thought? In the light of eternity, it won't make much difference. Whatever, I stand corrected. I'm going to take a look at, uh, which a sand lake then. Let me get a close up on the sand lake and see what's playing out down there. It's early morning, and I can clearly see the Thurgis. And Angela crawling out of the frozen fountain. But wait, where is Zergo? Zergo should be with them. They have to go back for Zergo. Why is no one listening to me? They must go back for Zergo. Well, all right, let's all just settle down now. We'll, we'll get back to that later. I'm sure they're going to remember to go back for Zirko. Don't worry about it. Now, I'm going to tell this here story about the loveless lizard Venusians. I'll tell it in Spanish so Aunt Helita can understand. I say muchos, muchos años, siglos, efectivamente, Millennia, in millennia, in uno de los sistemas solares, en donde existía siete planetas alrededor del sol, había una de ellas que se llamaba Earth, y otro que se llamaba Venus. Bueno, pues, había muchos más. Pero tratamos de estas dos planetas porque tuvieron unas batallas cósmicas que casi destruyeron todo el sistema. Actualmente tuvieron siete batallas cósmicas, pues por fin tu papá decidió terminar todo. Y en un tsunami solar tremendo aborró todo el sistema solar. Pero antes que el fin, su papá les dijeron a los habitantes especiales de cada planeta cómo pudiera huir antes que todo hubiera destruido. Mm. Oh, no. We can't bear to listen. Oh, the inhabitants of Earth, of Ven Earth and Venus were able to escape. Oh, yes, they did. They escaped the final solar tsunami to avoid a complete destruction. Really, really, really? Yes, really, they did. They did. Oh, pero como escaparon? 
Pues cálmate, Angelita, te voy a decir. Pero, había dos años vivieron oh, en Dines. Una mujer muy compasionada y amorosa con paz en, en su alma. Y también ella estaba con él. Y como todos sepan, de una vez, de cuando desgraciadamente, malas condiciones pasen aún a la gente quien son buenas. Qué horrible, ¿verdad? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. Why would that have happened to good people? Pues en esos días pasó a ella que se llamaba Zefra. Pues antes que salieron su planeta, Zefra tomó agua y comida venenoso. Oh no, she did. Why would why would she eat something? Poisonous. Why would she drink something poisonous? I can know. Por qué? Why would she drink something poisonous? Oh, mamá. Por qué? Por qué? Well, Angelita, I'm gonna tell you. She didn't really realize that the water was bad. You see, for many centuries on Venus, they had all come to believe that they had to stay underneath the surface of the planet for. Everything on the surface had been contaminated by previous nuclear blasts from evil inhabitants from Earth, so that they were all living in vast underground labyrinths that had to grow their own food underground and drink only from the freshwater springs. But your papa had given Zephra his sacred word that she could safely climb to the surface where an escape module would be waiting to take her and her baby, which wasn't born yet here, safely to the planet of Aetherius in the Simeon Galaxy. Yes, y'all remember that, don't you? Oh, the Simeon Galaxy, yes, yes. That's where the forest fairies lived. Yes, that's right, that's right, Angelita. Now, And she must trust her inner and higher signal to know just when to make her escape. Well, then why was her baby poisoned if she knew she had to wait for her guidance? Well, I tell you, honey, this may be the most difficult part of this story to get, Angelita, but because Zephra let her fear overcome her, she thought she was listening to her highest and her most voice, but in fact, she was listening to her own ego and her deepest inner fear that the solar tsunami would come to Venus before the arrival of their escape module. So, what she did, so she convinced her mother, Zerka, to creep up to the surface with with her that one night where, where they slept on the on the hot surface sands until dawn and, and getting more and more thirsty and more and more thirsty with each breath they took, feeling more and more pressed down by the heavy atmosphere there on Venus, you know. So when the escape module was still nowhere in sight, they dragged themselves to a beautiful green oasis, drinking long from the clear water there which, yeah, did quench their thirst all right, but to be sure, but but little did they realize that this water was not one bit pure, for it was laden with radioactivity from the last war with planet Earth. I know, I know, no, no puedes decir. Oh yes, oh yes, and you might well imagine that what happened when that escape module finally did arrive. Oh, oh, no. No quiero saber. Well, of course, they took pregnant Zephra and her mother Zerka aboard and gave them fresh clothing, clean water, and delicious food. But when Zerka confided in good captain Elijah Lightwing, he could only gasp in horror. Captain Elijah Lightwing said to them, 
Don't you realize what this means? Why would you climb to the surface last night? Why would you not wait for first light? Did you not know that your inner guidance was correct? Oh, yes, but, yes, but, yes, but, was all I could say. For it had been their own fear and their own belief that they knew better, which drove them up to the surface, thinking they would miss the escape module, was their downfall. It was not until they had arrived on the planet of Etherius in the Simeon Galaxy and after, after she gave birth to Zirko, did she realize the gravity of her air, so to speak. That is to say. But when the next escape module from Venus began landing, bringing more and more lizard Venusians to their new home on the planet of Etherius in the Simeon Galaxy, Zerka and Zephyr told their story over and over again so many times. The more they told their story over and over again about the gravity of their air or subsequent generations began to believe that gravity itself was the poison. <gasps> oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Yes, oh yes, it was simple miscommunication. Oh, Mama, I get it. It's like when we play that, uh, that telephone game and by the time it gets to me, I have it all mixed up. That's exactly right, Angelita, just like the telephone game words are like seeds, and if the seeds are bad, or if, yes, and if the seeds are bad, or if you plant your seeds in poison soil, that which grows will be poison itself. Words can be not only confusing, but very downright dangerous, even deadly, in fact. From that very day forward, every lizard Venusian born from then on came to believe that gravity itself was the killer. Oh, mother, everlasting life based on a misprint, or rather, a misinterpretation. Oh, ho, 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 talk about the classics. Ho, ho, ho. Venusian. Oh, poor oh, lizard Venusian. Poor lizard. Poor lizard Venusian. Oh, those poor lizard poor pobres. They lost lizard Venusians. Pobres. I wonder where Zerko is today. I would sure like to set him straight about gravity. We all know that gravity is love, right, Papa? Oh, right you are, Angelita. What are you waiting for? Go find Zerko and tell him. And while you're at it, you may also find Shimano. Now, it's getting late. Time for bed, everyone. Help me douse the campfire. Thor, Thor, come here. Help me douse this campfire. We wouldn't want to cause any forest fires, now would we? Especially for the forest fires down there on Ethereus. Oh, there's a really wet shaking. A fur just emerging from the frozen fountain that has just broken open in its gushing water. Here comes Angela. She's dripping wet, too, and really dazed, stepping onto that flat sheet of thin ice. Careful, careful, Angela. It might break any second. Oh, whoa, whoa. What the? Ay, ay, ay. What was all that crack? Yeah, Angela, that was thunder. Cracked open the fountain, and it's a good thing, too. Thank God. Yeah, you mean thank Thor, maybe. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, we could have been stuck in that frozen fountain till summer. See, Angela, cracking things open can be a very good thing. Yeah. Ha. <sighs> Now I remember we were all negotiating a peace treaty between the forest fairies and the lizard Venusians, and and then a bunch of a bunch of them broke in and they captured Anhelita. She's being held hostage right now. Oh, look! They're leapfrogging from the ice patch to ice patch across Swan or Sand Lake onto the bank. They turn left and they run down the road home. Oh, 
Whoa! Hey, they're just we've we've got to we've got to get back and rescue Angelita, and 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 we got to get Zerko too. Yeah, man, Zerko too, Zerko too. Wait, that's right, Zerko. Wait. Oh, oh, wait. I gotta rest, Zerko. He didn't go there with us, did he? Yeah, no, and no, Angel Zerko. Didn't go with us. I'm talking. We're talking about the lizard Venusians are go. Well, well. Wait a second. Wait. Now I'm confused. Now I remember. Yeah, lizard circle. Right. Or rather, correct. And, and, Lord Aetherius is, is a flying unicorn, head of the Simian Galaxy, with the head of Senor Roel, and 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 Subasa is an angel with only one of his. Wings, and it's the left wing, right? Or, or correct? You're getting it now, Angela. Oh, we better get home. We gotta get back. Back where? Home or Aetherius? Well, both. Lizard Zirko, that's another story. Lizard Zirko may be the same as your Zirko. Hmm. Well, on Aetherius, he lives in the sand dune labyrinths without a tail, and that one gimpy leg, hmm, bullied by his own tribe. Well, does sound kind of like your Zirko. Zirko, heavenly stars. Oh, I remember that field trip to the sand dunes when Zirko fell all the way down and broke his one good leg, and he still thinks his... Jennifer and I pushed him down there, but we didn't. Poor Zirko. No wonder he still doesn't trust me. <laughs> Meow. It's about time you apologize. Zirko's your soulmate, Angela. Oh, Mother, give me the remote control. I need to get a close-up on Angela and a third juice as they run back to Crestone. Each lightning strike they dodge is like another layer of the story as Angela realizes that her legacy is mirrored by the stories of Angelita and Shivano, Wanda and Joe, Wisteria and Sal, and Zirko too. As if they are all, as if they are all, somehow, the same people, playing out stories of prejudice hatred, and war, century after century. Oh, I better get home and make peace with Zirko. I, I hope he forgives me. <laughs> Meow, Zirko will forgive you, Angela. Just listen, so many people in this old world are just plain afraid of love. Love is like gravity. The red threads of gravity and love hold the whole universe together. Yeah, and that's your way, the way of Ethurgis, isn't it, Ethurgis? Tienes razón, Angelita. Nothing can stop true love. I'm Angela, not Angelita. Oh, meow, what's the difference? Well, oh, Ethurgis, this is no time for philosophizing. How did we even get here? Well, how could you forget, Angela? We were on... We were on Aetherius, and, and the lizard Phoenicians had captured Angelita. Oh, no. How did that happen? Oh, it's a long story I'll tell you later, but for now, let's get out of this storm and go home. Right. Yeah, let's get home. Mom will be frantic. He must show meow. Let's go. I know a shortcut. Quick, before lightning strikes us both down, these spring storms in Colorado can be downright brutal. Maybe it's time for me to wake up and start making peace. Let's get home. Let's go. Precisamente. Meow, Angela. Precisamente. So, dear listeners, as the lightning storm quiets and a bright shaft of sunlight beams onto the road leading to Grandma Gaga's rock shop, we hear a there is ethereal choir singing of love, harmony, breathing peace. Uh, all right now. Uh, okay, ladies. Lilith, you take the lead on this. 
And um, I, I'd like to invite Analita to do this as well. Ready? I breathe. I open my heart, my mind, and I allow. Right, there we go. Now, on this part, I think I'd like to hear a, a call and response. Lilith, you can do that. Think about how sometimes you can push Thor's buttons. I know, while he pushes yours too. What we want here is to elicit a change, an inner change, a more peaceful, loving way to interact with each other. I want you to simply be peaceful and loving. Well, let's take that from the top of your harmony. I know that we are getting that it's not only already there. Very good, very good. One, two, ready, and... I breathe. I open my heart, my mind, and I allow. Whatever, whatever gifts, whatever thoughts, whatever message, I know that we're getting there. That it's not only already there, but as we paid the next steps. And as I breathe, and as I breathe, and alone, and alone, the messages to come, the messages to come flow freely into my mind, my heart. My soul, I know I have the right ideas, the right thoughts, the right words. If I am a concerned, what is next? I simply breathe and a while I and remind the message is going to be already present. I am never alone. I am never alone. I breathe and I move into the silence. He answered. To any question, question, and I move into the silence. Come and say bye bye, guns of the call. Time and tell, time and tell. Well, dear listeners, I can't wait for the next episodes. Let's keep trying to sort out all these wild dreams from reality. This is Billy Ruth Hopkins Furuichi with KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial, right here in beautiful downtown Brookings, where every day is an awesome day. And we can always choose to say yes. Life is indeed very very good remember to catch us on podcast at kciw.org forward slash angelita's wings that's a-n-g-e-l-i-t-a-s dash wings until next time